Several uh, was, both, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy? Good afternoon, evening, and welcome to the latest edition of Vo Views on the News. And as you can see, we have a panel of wise and witty people who will give their opinions about things that have happened from the religious uh, entity, <laughs> the religious bodies that have affected humanity over the past seven days. So starting with the UK, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak met Benjamin Netanyahu at number 10 Downing Street because the Israeli leader was visiting. And we, as we all know, he's facing domestic turmoil at home in Israel over his judicial reforms, which include plans that would give the government decisive control over the committee which appoints judges. Now, some of you may notice that there's a parallel to that in other countries. What do you think? Well, it's really important, isn't it, to have an independent judiciary? And um, how do you secure such uh, an independence? We, we seem to just about do it in the, in the UK, where we have a uh, an appointments commission, which is not directly controlled by um, by the par party in power, but I would be interested to hear how other countries uh, do it. And of course, we we are aware of the problems in the United States mm -hmm. with um, uh, basically political control of appointments. Yeah. Um, well, you know, local judgeships. Absolutely. Are... Can I just introduce you guys? Because I forgot oh, to do sure. that. Mm -hmm. That was Guy Otten, who's from the Manchester area of England, and the other representatives here are from across the transatlantic. We have David from Manhattan, we have Dread DP Higgs, Dread Pirate Higgs from British Columbia, well actually really at the northern end of British Columbia currently, and we have Dr. Ty Wells from Tennessee. So welcome guys, I forgot to do that, stupidly. I think I've drunk too much red wine. Anyway, <laughs> we've, we, we've got um, representatives of three different countries here. Guy's already given his explanation of how we in the UK appoint judges. Can we hear from America and Canada? Sure. I mean, uh, Ty, you can take this or I can't. I, I, I mean, there are local judgeships who are usually uh, voted on. Uh, and then there are federal judgeships um, like, let's say, for the U.S. Supreme Court, where the party in power will nominate someone for um, a federal office, and then they have to be approved by, uh, I believe, the, uh, uh, the Congress. So it's, a, it's still a very political process, um, but on the lower judgeships, you get to, you know, you get to vote for the person, uh, as a citizen, uh, on the federal judgeships, you really get uh, your representatives to vote for, you know, your best interest if that happens. At least you can vote them out next time, I guess. Right. At least at the local level. Yeah. 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 It works much the same way here, too. Yeah. What about Canada, Dred? Do you know how this system works over there? Well, you know, I'm embarrassed to say that I'm, I'm not as familiar with our process as I am with uh, the American process. <laughs> I do know, I do know that uh, you know, there's the attorney general, um, and and then the, the representative of the queen uh, yeah. here in Canada. So it's it's a it's a different system than uh, yeah, America you, for sure. You're probably more like the English system because you've. Yeah. Uh, you're still in the Commonwealth, and you've inherited our, our uh, yeah. what we, like, our uh, laws. Yeah, like our Supreme Court judges, 
uh, both provincial and federal are not uh, appointed. They're mm -hmm. or not by the governor, but the prime minister. Or yeah, the yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. I mean, I mean, I, th I think in the UK, um, all judges are technically technically appointed by either the Queen or the Lord Chancellor, and the Lord Chancellor is the government minister. But they don't get to appoint those. Uh, um, they don't get to choose them. The the yeah. choice is as a result of a selection process. And I've mm -hmm. been through it because I used to be a tribunal judge. Ah. And and, and uh, you, you know you you um, usually apply, but you can also be approached and invited to apply or invited mm -hmm. to to stand. And um, uh, the, um, the 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 selection process um, goes through. Um, you know, there's 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 a shortlisting based on a written application, and then there is an interview, which um, and, and the interview it, it has a, a civil servant on it, um, another judge, and uh, a third person. I can't think who that would be, um, but the point is, there's no political involvement at all in that, and then the name goes forward to uh, an appointments commission, who then um, recommend the appointment, and that uh, recommendation is then adopted. It's not there's no, there's no interference at all. So yeah, it's yeah. essentially um, essentially non-political in that sense. Nice. The monarch does a rubber stamp on it. Yeah, the the, the queen um, it, or king, you know, whoever, uh, you know, it, it's it, the the appointment of senior judges is made in the name of the king. Uh, by the king, but it, but you know he doesn't have anything to do with it. No. And neither does any politician have anything to do with it, other than nominally. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, th this works. I think this works quite well. However, this our Supreme Court has has in recent times been quite politically interventionist, and has aroused the wrath of um, the Conservative Party, who don't like their laws and they're being questioned or interpreted out. I mean, our Supreme Court cannot, of course, declare any law invalid, but it, what it can do is declare a law, um, uh, uh, what, what's made called a declaration of incompatibility with oh. human rights legislation. And if there's a declaration of, human right, of, of incompatibility with human rights legislation, then the government are obliged to do something about it. Mm. Oh. That's so very it's, good. Not, it's not abrogated? It's... No, some other way. Not, well, not the, not, not laws made by Parliament cannot be abrogated by the High Court. They can be interpreted, but not abrogated. However, laws made by inferior parliamentary bodies and local councils, you know, bylaws and things, they can be set aside by the Supreme Court and by the High Court as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Comprise I mean, well, I mean, I think that's a very good system considering in the U.S. where you have. Um, um, nefarious uh, religious influence with the last three yeah. judges bending what yeah. was historically a very progressive, uh, forward-facing, modernistic uh, yeah. Supreme Court um, mm -hmm. with between Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell getting three Supreme Court justices, one two weeks before the election um, in you've seen the effect of this on um, not only our laws, but our politics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roe versus Wade, you know, exactly. a woman's right to reproductive freedom, gone. Yeah. You know, so this is, uh, this is the danger in yeah. uh, assuming that people are going to work in everyone's best interest rather than their own. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could do a whole show on this, but I'm not going to allow that to happen because yeah. there's lots of other news to talk about today. One day, maybe, we will focus on something like that, the, the, the differences between the different justice systems and maybe what we would recommend as probably the best, not, not the best of those available, but the best compiled from facets of those available. Anyway, looking at this visit of uh, Netanyahu, Netanyahu to number 10 Downing Street, hundreds of protesters gathered at the gates of, Dra of Downing Street to demonstrate against Benjamin's policies. There was a cacophony 
including shouts of shame and traitor as Netanyahu made the short walk from his limousine to the steps of number 10. And the reason for this is that Mr. Netanyahu has, def had at that point, that we're talking about early this week, defied calls to scrap a shake-up of the legal system, which proposes, as I said earlier, to take, give the government decisive control over the judge appointments. And the, this has caused a social upheaval and uh, the, in fact, the, the president of Iraq, uh, sorry, of Israel, has come out saying that Benjamin should, uh, should change his mind. So by Monday, tens of thousands of people in Israel are taken to the streets and the police and soldiers were using water cannon against them near Mr. Netanyahu's house. Then later on Monday, when the, the president, Isaac Herzog, called on the government to halt the reforms, they, they gave in. The prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, temporarily suspended his plans for judicial reforms because his coalition partner, you remember that Israel has had a difficulty forming a government because none of them, none of the parties won an election and they had to rub along with very disparate views. And his coalition partner had threatened to leave the coalition, but he finally announced that a deal has been struck to keep the coalition together. So what we have there is a very shaky situation. Anyway. Yeah. Well, it's good. There's a, a bunch of them to keep each other in check. Yeah, 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 that's good, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the idea of separation of powers is a good one. Uh, mm. But, it, but it, you know, we have a little bit of it in this country, but not enough of it. Uh, mm -hmm. But we do have that. And I think, I think it, we need a bit more of it, to be honest. And uh, um, after Brexit, we've had a tremendous concentration of power in mm. Westminster. Mm. Um, we have a bit of devolution, but I think we need more devolution. And mm. uh, one of the good things about being in the European Union was that there was a, a, a bit of power being exercised mm. in, a, in, a, in a more democratic way in Brussels yes, than yes, there indeed. was in, in, in this yes. country. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, again, that's another show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. We could talk about that for a long time. Moving to Canada, though, for the benefit of you, Dredd, all right. A rail, a rail company. Uh, what do they call themselves? Um, via, via, via rail. Via rail. Via rail. Yeah. They. One of their staff complained to a Muslim who was praying that he was bothering the customers, and he's made a video and he's shown that where he was praying, there was nobody be bothered he, he said he set down his prayer mat and he was doing his prayers and not a, not bothering anybody not offending anybody and the result of that is the the train company has apologized for uh the staff members behavior hmm. so do, do you about this? i i hadn't heard about it but uh again um, you know, given my treatment at the hands of uh, several uh, government agencies, um, why why it works for Via Rail and it doesn't work for the agencies I deal with, I don't know. We're talking out of two sides of their mouths. Mm, yeah, there you go. I mean, I I, I do notice a tendency of, of um, Muslims to want to pray publicly and demonstrate their devotion and I, I i i think it's a form of sort of missionary dawah isn't it they're, mm. they're trying to promote their religion and show how devout how how religious they are but like, i mean when, when i when i see a, a um a a muslim on his knees with his bum in the air i just think that he is failing to be to act as a dignified human being 
Yeah. You know, he's 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 portraying himself as some kind of slave, and I think yeah. it's uh, I I think it's um, it's objectionable to be honest. But um, you know, you. Have, yeah, well, Islam does mean submission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think somebody's lost their contact lens or their car keys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get on your knees um, yeah. and try and help them? Oh, well, in, 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 cer no, in certain well, I mean, circles, in certain circles, you wouldn't want to be uh, down on your knees with your bum in the air anyway. Right. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, if this person is doing this in a public area and they have a right to religious freedom, how do you? And they're not, and they're not bothering anybody. How do you stop them? I mean, if, if, uh, in a, in a in a free secular society, you have a right to express your religion just like you have an equal right yeah. to express your non-religion. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's my a good point. point. Yeah. My, my, my I mean, view, my view would be to allow them to do what they want to do. But then educate them not to, not to leave. <laughs> Let them Tell explore them. the option that they want consensually. And if it's not like praying in the middle of a train track on a train that's about to depart and holding up everybody, right. you can do what you want. Yeah. Like, that's exactly. not a problem. And, mm. you know, I don't see a difference between kneeling and praying or clasping your hands and sitting in a, in a chair by yourself and praying or stalling yourself with your hands up in the air. I mean, it's functionally all the same thing. Like, however you prostrate yourself, it's not that big of a difference to me personally. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't try that any more than I would someone wearing a pirate hat, you know? Like, it's just. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't bother me what hat you wear. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, it's not a, as long as it's not a crown and you pretend to be a king <laughs> you know just to a little bit further on that um you know sometimes like i've seen you know a couple and maybe even on this uh, on this uh, show where um you know people have interrupted uh, school board meetings or uh, mayoral uh, council meetings um to you know pray um, to admonish the council for not doing the Christian right thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and that's where it is definitely inappropriate mm -hmm. uh, for, for people to uh, yeah. and, you know, assert right. themselves and their religious beliefs in yeah. a context where it's not appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. It's not appropriate to force it on others, but right. this guy was on his own, so let him get on with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Moving over to Afghanistan, 17-year-old Habiba says, every day I wake up with the hope of going back to school. The Taliban keeps saying they will open schools, but it's been almost two years now and I don't believe them and it breaks my heart. He blinked and bites her lip, trying not to tear up. Isn't it a terrible situation that this country, the only country, have forbidden their girls from attending secondary school? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I mean, you can look at Pakistan, you know, um, who's the young lady who was shot in the head, who uh, survived and has yeah. become an outspoken critic. Um, you, you have Malala Yousaf Sai. Yeah. Malala, yeah. Malala Malala Yousaf Sai. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you have in these very dark, um, darkly pessimistic, uh, pa patriarchal religious societies, um, uh, uh, an ongoing war against uh, women. Uh, and it comes out in all these dysfunctional ways where 50% of your population just because they're born female, um, cannot access the things that they have based on the human, their human rights, the access to such freedom. And uh, yeah. that we should definitely hold accountable um, yeah. in every way, shape, and possible. Absolutely. And in every country, because, yes. uh, of course, the defeat of Roe versus Wade in America uh, is the same thing for women as it is in Pakistan or Iran mm -hmm. or anywhere else in the world where that's right, you know, where if we look at them and say, man, that's that's crazy that they're 
right. not letting their their uh, girls get educated, and at the same time, it's uh, this very same thing is going on here. Yeah, and it is religion that's porn that that's it is absolutely. I mean, it is absolutely uh, a religious modality, a religious point yeah. of view that is causing all of these things. Yeah. Yep. 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 Well, what, what did it Madeline Murray O'Hare say that, you know, had we not had, you know, religion or the dark ages, we would be 500 years further along in our, you know, social investments, our technology investments, our science. So, so think about all of this lost opportunity in every country of the world that uses religion and theocracy for mm. their laws um, for all of these things, and you can see how it has this detrimental effect yep. on 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 the world. Yeah, indeed. Yep. Yeah, we had a, an interview with a uh, what did she call herself? A misfit, um, one of the, the weird cults that uh, restricts uh, what they they think in terms of uh, ancient technology. What are they? What are, Mennonites? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. We have a look at the archive. You'll see what what she had to yeah. say about mm -hmm. the way she was brought up. My my yeah. wife is a my wife is a Mennonite, um, mm. so their Mennonites are not that extreme. It's like the Amish or the Hutterites mm -hmm. that are more extreme with respect yeah. to uh, living yeah. with limited technology. Yeah, yeah, and that just shows you how religions try. Willing, willfully to keep people back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Moving to the Middle East. This is this is fun, really, because Lebanon, which is a country that has a number of problems, because as you know, they had this enormous explosion in Beirut. Uh, is it the capital, or is certainly a major port? And a it's few years. Ago, yeah, yeah. A few years ago, and they wrecked. A large area of the city which really still hasn't been redeveloped or repaired and uh, in addition to that they have enormous um, economic problems and uh, so what they've recently done is they've had a problem with clock changes because to take your pardon <laughs> clock, clock changes oh, okay. oh, clock. Time. <laughs> daylight saving time <laughs> I don't know what you imagined I said. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you need to clean your ears out, David. <laughs> it's, uh, it's beard. Yeah. He, he was thinking you were talking poultry. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, the problem they've had is that they've traditionally changed their clocks. Clocks on March the 25th, but the Prime Minister, current Prime Minister, is a caretaker Prime Minister because they can't form a, a stable government. He's called uh, Najib Mikati, and he proposed to introduce or to postpone daylight saving for a month to April the 20th because it's after the holy month of Ramadan. But most of the population, several churches rejected that. Several media organizations rejected that. So on uh, March the 26th, a lot of people have woke up thinking that the clocks had changed. And a lot of people woke up thinking that they hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> so they really wrecked their... Their, their, their credibility in, in the eyes of their own population and the world. But they've, they've resolved it by going back to the original date. Yeah, I mean, I don't see what the problem is, because um, if the clocks go forward, as they do at this time of the year, hmm. it means that um, they just lose one hour. I mean, that shouldn't make any difference to their fasting should it i mean then it's a, it's a one hour in the middle of the night usually yeah I, mean, I suppose they have one hour less in which to eat um in the middle of the night you know hey someone's watching <laughs> <laughs> he knows all i mean uh, i mean uh, of course of course islam has history with this because when 
um, Islam started, they abolished the uh, the um, the spare month, the the original Babylonian calendar, which the uh, Arabs were using, uh, inserted an extra month or extra two months every few years, in order to ensure that the um, the the calendar approximated to you know the sun and to the uh, seasons but um, um muhammad um abolished that apparently for religious reasons and that is why the muslim calendar comes forward 10 days every year because yeah. they've um, got to step with reality yeah 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 <laughs> that's, a good, that's yeah. a good way of looking at it yeah well yeah. you know actually there should there should be 13 months right because there's 13 there should, yeah. lunar months yeah, yeah. In there. Uh, but yeah. again, that was decided on religious terms. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it annoying that Mother Nature doesn't want to fit our calendar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. So we then had a, a, an item on the news from the uh, South Africa correspondent. She can't, can't be here tonight. But she reported, because you may remember last week, we reported on the Ugandan law, which has recently been introduced to criminalize homosexuality even further than it currently is in that country. The situation is that it's, um, it's illegal to be uh, caught, I suppose, being a homosexual. But now the law has upped the ante and it says that uh, it's actually illegal to declare that you are a homosexual and if somebody else knows that you are acting right. in a homosexual way it's their respons legal responsibility their duty to report you and, and what this has resulted in in uganda is a lot of threats being issued by yeah, people yeah. who don't like somebody else if you don't do what i want you know it's coercion then I will, report, I will report you as a homosexual. So that's been going on in Uganda. But in South Africa, the government has remained disappointingly quiet about it. It's, instead of, you know, most governments in the world would say, this is nonsense, Uganda, you're being very stupid. But South Africa hasn't, except for a few of the party not not the government parties but the other the opposition parties who have actually come out and said they disapprove mm -hmm. so if tercia was here we'd be talking about that mm -hmm. well you know there are 63 nations with laws uh, some are more regressive than uganda and some are more progressive than uganda but they all have the same theme of uh um uh, making it illegal to um, um, choose your um, sexuality uh, or perform sex acts with a member of the of your same sex, and uh, it's a large chunk chunk of Africa, but it is every continent where there are countries, including the Middle East, um, uh, in uh, South America and Central America. Um, so it's. There's this still this and and of course it's because of the religious indoctrination, yes. um, uh, and 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 so while there are somewhat uh, you know uh, there are all these UN accords, there are still all these countries with these laws on the books which criminalize. In the UK, up until what um, uh, what year? Nineteen uh, sixties. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, yeah, it was 1967, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I yeah. mean, in 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 the United States, uh, same thing. Uh, was was in 1577? There was something called the Buggery Law, which actually instituted Ooh. in the UK um, um, uh, this idea of not having sex with someone who was your own uh, partner. But even in the US, um, so you know, I mean, this stuff is e e we we have to be very cognizant that that this is out there um and just as that there's a war against women based on religion there's war against the other based on yeah. religion as well yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, religion is all about hatred, isn't it? It really it? is. Yeah, not just by oh, percent. Yeah. Just throwing out something else too, like, and and forgive me if this comes out too rude, but like David, Dread, Guy, you guys actively aren't having sex with a woman right now, right? Yet you're still straight. Am I accurate? <laughs> no, well, you, right. you are definitely not. I'm mean, not actively in the having, sex of having with a woman right now. Yet you're still straight. You don't, right? you don't have to ask that. That's an answer. That that's an impertinent question. Okay. And then John Richard, <laughs> you you've often made this point, so I'm not surprising anybody. But you can't have sex with a woman right now even if you wanted to, but you're still straight, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm making no admissions in that regard. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. I'm just making a point like it, right. sexual, gay activity is not, being gay isn't just when you're having sex with a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Not a set of actions. Yeah, I, I get the right, point. exactly. <laughs> it's an identity. And so yeah, yeah. they're not stifling a set of actions. They're, stif they're stifling a sense of identity that people have, yeah, yeah. even when they're not, Conducting behavior yeah. that people look down right. on. And, yeah, and that authentic is self. traumatic right. for someone who has to live with that identity yeah. on a long, exactly. uh, like as part of them for as a period of time. That's yeah. So they're not making codification of a set of rules or actions not to do. You're actually targeting people's sense of self, and that's, in my opinion, is so much more harmful. Yeah. And just to set mm -hmm. one thing straight, the last time I I was speaking to a meeting, and I said something like. If you gave me a woman now, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> one of the one of the men in the company said, "Does any of you women want to test that?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well. So so moving on to the Vatican. Yeah. They, oh, that again. They've they've mm -hmm. recently. Oh, that's good. That's good. They've recently responded to indigenous demands and they've formally repudiated the doctrine of discovery, which apparently was a theory that was backed by 15th century papal bulls that legitimized the colonial era seizure of native lands. Hmm. So back then, in the 15th century, the, the, the Vatican supported the, the subjugation of colony. But they've, yeah. recently, they've recently repudiated this. They called it the doctrine of discovery. And they've mm -hmm. recently said that maybe we weren't right to have done that. So indigenous leaders, this probably includes people in Canada, Brett Dredd, they've, mm -hmm. welcomed, they've welcomed this statement but they acknowledge that it's still some distance from the Vatican accepting culpability. Yeah, yeah. You know what I find equally disturbing, you know, to, to a certain extent, is that there are so many indigenous leaders that are still Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, they, they um, rightfully, uh, of course, uh, raise their fists against the colonial uh, colonialism of the church, and yet adopt the religious doctrines. Yeah, mm. it's at complete odds in my in my mind. Mm -hmm. Cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I, th I think the church made that statement or made that um, it, it kind of authorized um, the imperial and colonial activities that were being indulged in by you know, Christian nations. And I, 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 it was all part of the same, you know, imperialist venture. Mm -hmm. um, I think it should be seen as that. And it shows that the the uh, church really was following the current ethics rather than leading it. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Their God was keeping quiet. Okay, so <laughs> move, moving back. That's not unusual, is it? God no, man, it. apparently not. He does tend to keep quiet a lot. Quite mute. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but I don't understand. They don't. You know, they talk about "I'm sorry," but they don't talk about reparations. You know what I mean? Like they don't. Yeah. It, this is the problem. It, you know, it, admitting that you were violent and wrong and uh, did despicable things uh, because you thought you were right at the time is not the same as being held culpable for your no. actions. 
Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Well, I, yeah. I, I think the Pope. I think the Pope was given a a, a ceremonial headdress or something by the uh, Canadian uh, Indigenous Peoples representative. Yeah, he was a little while ago when he was over with you. Yeah. So moving on to the UK, as you know, we have two archbishops and 24 bishops sitting as of right in the House of Lords, our upper house. But the Commission on Political Power has recently pronounced that this is an anomalous presence and have recommended their removal. How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, that's great, great news, but it's going to take more than the odd commission. I mean, people have been saying this at various levels for years and years, but it's really good that a commission is now saying it. Um, but we need we, we need wholesale political reform in this country, including the abolition of the House of Laws and its replacement with something like a Senate. Um, mm. And and but we also need proportional representation, which is an absolute mm. vital yeah. reform, in my opinion. Mm. Plus a, a lot more devolution. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the basic principle is that deci political decisions should be made at the lowest level that's practicable. Yes. Uh, and, yes. And, yeah. and, and uh, you know, we're, we're not doing that in this country. Although, interestingly enough, there has been some minor steps to devolution to my area recently. Yeah. There should be more uh, what they call pothole politics, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Pothole politics. Yeah. Well, what annoys me about yeah. my local council is that they are concerned about potholes and things like that, but they're not concerned about the climate emergency. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. not particularly, yeah. not that I've noticed anyway. Well, yeah. Maybe if they it's stop okay. putting yeah. out so much hot air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you cut out there, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. going back to the US of A, in somewhere, I'm, I'm not sure where in the US of A, but there is a, a Mongolian boy who was born. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he, was, he was born in the US of A. And Lama Zonda, I think. The, yeah, yeah. The Dalai Lama has named him, he's uh, eight years old at the moment, as the reincarnation of the third most important <laughs> spiritual leader in Tibetan Buddhism. The name of this leader is the 10th Kalka Jetson Dampa Rinpoche. <laughs> Poor kid, sure. to be called that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure. That's what they all say. <laughs> But I mean, uh, you know, what worries me is that this kid is now going to be inducted into a highly indoctrinated lifestyle. Not just like where, the Dalai Lama was. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, so uh, he won't have much choice. I mean, it'll be hard for him to break out and yeah. reject the privileges that he'll receive, no doubt. Yeah. yeah indeed. Well, well and of course, it's based on a, a presupposition that uh, reincarnation is a thing that you can actually tell. Mm, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. it'd be like looking at a worm and saying, hey, I know for sure that was Jack the Ripper has just been reincarnated. <laughs> you know, like, how do you yeah. tell these things, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the current Dalai Lama, who is now 87 and was recruited, oh, I don't know whether that's the right word, when he was eight, he's been in the role for 80 years. So you can see how much of a trap it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Mm. So staying in uh, the US of A, there's a mega church in Washington. I think this is Washington, uh, the state rather than Washington, DC. No, uh, by and, even. Yeah, yeah, up your way. And they are threatening to terminate their employees unless they tithe 10% of their wages, oh, right, which of course right. the church pays, yeah. back to them. So why, why don't they just pay them 90% and keep the other? I mean, just <laughs> what yeah. sort of sense is this? 
I, I, I can't see how it would they would be taxed on it because they'd be taxed on it. If they get it as a tithe, it's not taxed. Yeah, that's right. Ah. So if they get ah, yeah, if it's a withholding, they get taxed yeah, on it. Would be taxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a clever way to get more money by the church. Yeah, but it, it, it seems like there's just no way that that would be allowed through the the labor laws. That too pressure, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like it's coercion, just, isn't it? Just yeah, threat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. fire somebody because they didn't give you money back. And you can <laughs> just say, you know, well, they weren't faithful enough and fire them based on that and then right. send the message out to everybody else who doesn't give up their tithing, you know? Or, yeah, that's the way that they'll do it because they're, they're not religious enough to work for them. Right. Yeah, but, but then that's yeah. discrimination based on religion. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, uh, are they not? They're not allowed to uh, discriminate on the basis of religion, right? No, because I think um, in the UK, some of the churches, maybe the Church of England, and some other churches have some exemptions as far as oh yeah, yeah, they have kind of there, there are in the US too. Like for instance, the the Ark Park, uh, Ken Ham's uh, Insanity oh, in yeah, right. Kentucky, right? If you want to work there, you have to fill out a declaration saying that you're a Christian, you believe in uh, all of the garbage that they spew regarding uh, anti-evolution. And uh, don't they also uh, have a sex thing? Uh, you can't be a homosexual. I'm sure. I, it wouldn't. Uh, I don't know, but I wouldn't be so shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. So yeah. you know, somehow they, you know, they they get away with it. You know. Yeah. Uh, Exemptions. I think it's called, right. think it's called um, a right to terminate. I think it's called a right to terminate or um, at will employment or something. There is a loophole right. that allows uh, yeah. a, a, an employer to fire an employee for any reason. And they sign on to it at the beginning. Uh, that way they don't have to find the reason. They can just be like, OK, you're fired or that's this right. is your last. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the reason is. So right. it, it could still be leveraged to tithe or this is going to happen to you. Right. And you make somebody sign an NDA so that way they can't yeah, yeah. complain yeah, about yeah. it as well. So you get them on both ends. So there are a lot of rules we need to change. Can, can you just cross your fingers when you're signing it? <laughs> uh, why, why can't you just swear to God? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. coming up to the end now, guys, we're staying with America. You'll be pleased to hear that most even religious Americans say that the LGBTQ people should be free of discrimination when they are at work, at, in public, or at home. Mm -hmm. And that's true even among groups that oppose same-sex marriage. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Good news. Bravo. Okay. <laughs> there's one place where there's still disagreement. And this is over whether businesses... Just one place? <laughs> well, one I'm aware of. This is over whether there are businesses, such as cake bakers... Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. You're, you're way ahead of me. <laughs> mm -hmm. have, have the right to refuse service. Right. And the Americans are still split along religious and party lines on that issue. Mm-hmm. But well, it's more than cake bakers. It's pharmacists, right? If they don't yeah. want to fill abortion pills, or if they want to, yeah. you know, it's it's everywhere, sadly. Yeah. yeah. Cake cake bakers and other vendors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you you'll be pleased to hear that of LGBTQ Americans, half of them are young and claim no religion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's good news. Or, or past a curious. <laughs> <laughs> pasta. Right. I like pasta. I, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm not so keen on pizza, but I like pasta. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I'll go with that. Finally, mm -hmm. take a look at this picture and give me your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> is that a is that a Russian a Russian priest? Um Blessing a a military aircraft that is about to go and attack Ukraine. I guess so. <laughs> My yeah. God. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. Wow. I well, wonder if you if the Ukrainians have a similar priest 
doing the same thing to their planes. Yeah, yeah. they probably do. Yeah, they probably do. Yeah, well, and, uh, yeah. and I think uh, uh, presumably they will bless the, the power tank. of intercessory prayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. There's not so queer as folks, is there? Yeah. Uh, uh, Guys, thank you very much. You've been wonderful. Say goodbye right, to thanks. everyone. Bye, Take everybody. care, you See Andy. you again next week. Bye bye then. Bye. Several uh, clergy. Russell was Pope, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you, what do you have to say about that, guys?